This recent ComfyUI blog post has some information about a few new nodes to help with regional prompting, and includes using LoRas via hooks instead of the typical model injection. It is a fairly long article and I won't be going through it all, so do give it a read afterwards. As it throws you right into the deep end, what I'll be doing today instead is to start off with something a bit more basic before building up to the more complex things. As a TLDR for the new nodes, what they've got here is masking LoRa and model weights, scheduling LoRa and model weights, conditioning helper nodes, and expanded model patcher. First things first, and if you don't have ComfyUI installed, then you'll need that along with ComfyUI Manager. Most things I'm showing today are built in, but many workflows have custom nodes, the names of which you can see on the node labels. And it should go without saying, because these are new nodes, you'll need to be using an up-to-date version of Comfy. Into the first workflow then, it should be noted these new nodes work with any model, not just the Flux one I'm loading here. You could just as easily use SDXL or Stable Diffusion 1.5, for example. Now, because what we want is to have different prompts, styles, LoRa's, or whatever for specific regions, what we're going to need to have is different prompts and some type of mask. You can see up the top here, I've got the first prompt, then I'm loading image as mask, which I'm also inverting, and down the bottom here, we've got the second prompt. I'm also setting up our latent size in there too, because, well, you need one. So from this, it should be fairly easy to see that on the left-hand side, I want to have my photo of a wizard rodent, and then on the right-hand side, I want a sort of cartoon illustration of a guy reading the paper. The next group has two of the new Comfy UI nodes, Cond Set Props and Cond Set Props Combine. There are lots of optional inputs such as hooks and time steps, but for now I'm just using the conditioning and a mask. So there we've got the first one, there we've got the second mask, and obviously we're combining them together. Throw that conditioning into, well, whatever sampler you fancy, and you should get what you asked for. There we go. In this case, I've got a mostly realistic rodent on the left-hand side and a cartoon art-style guy on the right reading his paper. But nerdy, I can do this all already. Why the new nodes? That's right, so far we've not really done much new other than, well, use the new nodes. For example, you could have used the conditioning set mask node like we've got over here. So there's conditioning set props, there's conditioning set mask, doing the same thing, and yeah, we, we've, we've got the same result. However, the new node also has those optional inputs for hooks and time steps, which will come in handy in just a moment. It is worth noting the downside, however, as there are now two sets of conditioning, you're doing twice the work, the same as if you include a negative prompt in Flux. There's plenty more we can do though, so let's move on to the next workflow. Other new nodes include the so-called default ones, which do a bunch of default stuff for you, again, saving some nodes and noodles. This time around, I've got a funny shaped mask, because why not? And as it helps to actually prompt for something that would go with the masks you've provided, this time I'm asking for a photorealistic castle for the white part, with a cartoon rodent in the black area. Up the top here is what we saw just a moment ago, combining the two cond set props nodes, and the result is what I asked for. Okay, good to see things are working. However, you can simplify this a bit by using the cond set default combine, which we've got down here. This time the new prompt is for the anime portal, which is masks like before, but this cond set default combine doesn't have a mask input. It basically just does everything else. So this is the default, everything that hasn't been masked. And as you can see from the results, they are very much the same. Just to recap so far then, we've got some new nodes which essentially let us set the conditioning for specific areas, allowing different styles and prompts to go just where you want them to be. But what about those LoRa's for specific areas? Well, in that case, all you need is this new Create LoRa Hook node, which you can then link into your clip via a set clip hook. In this case, I'm using a Beardsley style LoRa to change the illustration style so that hopefully now our jaunty beaver wizard looks more like... This guy here, 
Very nice indeed. And yes, you can link loads of them up all over the shop if you want to. However, there is a bit of a performance hit. If I go and have a look over at the time, this time it took two minutes and 13 seconds compared to the other one, which is only around 46. You could add a Laura to the other area as well if you wanted. Plus there are loads of new combine nodes as well to help with conditioning pairs just like you'd use with other models such as Stable Diffusion 1.5. But how about if you wanted to use Redux instead of Allura? Well, let's take a look at some options for that. For this example, I'm using some Flux to Pos nodes. And as an aside, one recent update means there is now a new Fireflow option for RF Edit. Very cool. Do have a look at my earlier video about RF Edit. Of course, that's down in the video description, but basically it's now even more cool. Anyway, today we're focusing on things in different regions. So in this example, I'm using a node I hadn't actually noticed before called Regional Style Model Apply. As we're using Redux, I'm loading the Redux models down here as normal and also having a configure modified flux in there for the flux to pause nodes. Like you can see, each prompt now actually has an image to go with its prompt and I haven't really typed any text in there because, well, that's kind of how Redux works. You don't have to. I've got the clip vision in code as usual, but this new flux to pause node regional style model apply. So much the same thing as before. I've got a, a checkerboard pattern this time. So in the white areas, I'm going to expect some waterfall. And then the black areas, we've got this more anime cyborg face. These also have strength on as well. So in this case, I've got those both set to 0.67. So not as strong as it could be. Going up here, I'm using the new nodes. Once again, the concept props and the combined default. Run that through your typical sampler and there you go. So we've got our checkerboard pattern, which it does indeed have the waterfall in the checkerboard areas and the anime face as well. You don't have to hook your Laura through clip though. Instead, you could hook it directly into the cond set props node, which is what I've done here. Up the top then, we've got the same as before. I've got an image input, but here is where I'm applying the hook on the cond set props. There we go, going straight in there. Now that's got the mask on. So that's just applying to the church in the bottom right. We've got the woman in the top left. If we go and have a look at what that's generated, there we go. Now, this is interesting because obviously it was a straight line mask and this mask is kind of curvy, but we do indeed have the painting changed into the Beardsley style with the photographic style woman in the top left. As I hadn't used that flux to pause regional style model apply node before, here is a version of the purely flux to pause sort without using any of those new nodes. Once again, it has two sets of conditioning, so it's around 40 seconds for this test to generate, but you can get some interesting results. Even though I've not actually used any text, this example does also have a third prompt. This is because flux to pause is outputting a model node here rather than the conditioning, so we still need to plug something in. As you can see, it works well, but because the regions come to us via that model output, it isn't so easy to apply a LoRa to a specific region. However, you can of course use both, like I'm doing in this example. Up the top here, I've got the flux to pause regional conditioning with its model output. So that's exactly like the previous video I've done on that. But the conditioning I'm also sending in down the bottom here is of the regional type and I've added a Laura in here as well. So this time I'm changing quite a lot of things. So I've got the woman on the left in the white area there that's going through Redux. It's also going through this cond set props where I'm applying a Beardsley Laura. So the woman is going to appear in the Beardsley style, whereas the castle thing there over on the right in the black area, that's going to be more of a photographic style. We're plugging it in here so you can see all the different things going in. So here I've got the conditioning, that's from the double set, and here is the model. So you could, if you wanted to, I haven't got it applied here, also apply another Laura there, but that would apply to the entire model. And there we go. So we've got the woman there on the left-hand side in the Beardsley style, transferred from that original photograph, and the rest of it is sort of this photographic castle. 
lots of ways to use these new nodes then and while they don't offer anything super new as such they do come built in and are a great way to simplify this type of workflow Ooh, nerdy rodent he really makes my day showing us ai in a really british way 